Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Who look at your shills, Desolate Source, Passive Spassels, Pacifists, Warmongers. I'm a useful idiot. So I want to talk about Syria, because, uh, well, that's the topic of the day. And, uh, I'm kind of be, I'm going to kind of be a little scattered on this video because there's been so much happening and there's been, uh, so many developments so quickly that, uh, and, and then the fact that it's pretty demoralizing, it's pretty mind boggling. We, we could even find ourselves in this position again, just beyond belief. And the sequence of events is appalling to say the least. Um, just a, a parade of hypocrites, a parade of warmongers. And uh, it's just very disheartening. So, uh, so where we are at now? Well, originally, um, they wanted to rush through and uh, not even wait for the inspectors to leave Syria to have a strike. And there would have been a strike last week if uh, Britain had voted for it. They were lined up to be first on deck, and uh, the uh, Parliament shot it down. So that changed things. But we still have France on board. Now uh, Saudi Arabia say they're on board, which. Of course, it's a no-brainer. Saudi Arabia has been working uh, effortlessly and tirelessly um, to get uh, the Assad government removed from Syria. And uh, the fact that they're on board with this attack is hilarious, to say the least. And then, uh, of course, the Arab League. And uh, then we have France uh, is up to bat. And uh, um, they're uh, putting together some sort of loose co coalition. This is pretty much what I've been uh, predicting, which is... A Libya model where there'll be uh, uh, NATO limited strikes and uh, there will be some sort of loose knit coalition. They're still trying to make the story fly, and that was everything hinged on that for me. But whether they were even going to get this story to fly. So now, even though most of uh, all the chemical attacks in um, Syria have been attributed to the rebels and lots of discoveries of rebels with chemical weapons, um, the, the, the uh, narrative now is. Uh, we've known all along that all these attacks were the Assad government, and this new one is just one more. And uh, so uh, now we have Obama having to put off the uh, attack on Syria. So now we're going to uh, uh, is going to bring something to Congress, and I can guarantee that between now and then uh, he'll get enough votes on board to to make this thing happen. Uh, it's it's not the Obama agenda; it's the handler's agenda, and that's why I know it has to go through one way or another, and one way or another, Obama's going to have to take the heat for it. But that's why the handlers hire people like Obama uh, to take the heat for things like this. So um, so let's get into some of the other uh, gruesome details. So now uh, they claim that uh, 1,429 were killed in this uh, chemical attack. And uh, one still can't rule out the uh, rebels in doing this. Uh, one question that's been asked is, why, why would the rebels kill you know, 1,400 of their own people. That's a small price to pay in a uh, culture like that. And let's remember, most of the, the fighters in uh, Syria right now are foreigners. They could probably give a shit about Syrians. And uh, they certainly don't care anything about the Kurds. And uh, so anyway, that's a, that's a moot point. Uh, sacrificing 1,400 people um, for this sort of cause is, is uh, chicken scratch for these kind of people. And uh, who's going to be the winners in this? The winners are going to be Israel, and that's the main winner. This will neuter um, uh, uh, Syria as a uh, as a rival, as a potential threat, and it will also uh, uh, take a lot of the support away from Hezbollah and Lebanon. So Israel has a lot to gain from this. So they certainly want the strikes, and this is what they wanted all along. And, and if that's what Israel wants, that's what Israel gets, because that's how it works. And then the uh, the rebels are the winners, because the rebels will. Uh, now have uh, U.S. Air Force and uh, who knows what other uh, bad actors will enter France, and uh, they will be doing the, the grunt work so that the, uh, the Al Qaeda forces and the free, so-called Free Syrian Army and other elements can uh, have some victories in the field. And then uh, Saudi Arabia is a big winner in this because this is what they've wanted all along. They spent a lot of money on it, and uh, they want to see results. And, uh, and then as an economic distraction, considering we have more stress in the economy and uh, things are going badly there. So have a nice war will kind of uh, take the attention away from that and also uh, have an alibi uh, in case something should happen. And another part of this, of course, is the military-industrial complex wins because uh, they want to use up 
all those Tava Hawk missiles and things like that. So that the government has to buy it. a whole bunch more. And, um, and then uh, we have neocon foreign policy still dominates. So here, once again, we have this continuity between the, the uh, Republicans and the Dem Republicans, you know, Bush and Obama, one continuous foreign policy. And uh, interestingly enough, it's a neoconservative policy uh, outlined in the Project for a New American Century by uh, the neocons of the neocons. And uh, so it's pretty interesting to have the so-called progressives and Democrats in office now and um, uh, adapting the, the exact same policy. And uh, so Syria has threatened some uh, attacks on Israel, and Iran has uh, threatened some attacks on Israel. And, uh, we'll see what happens. Hezbollah has 70,000 rockets in, in Lebanon, so those could potentially get unleashed. So I, I definitely expect some more uh, violence to spill over in Lebanon should this escalation take place. And um, But the important thing for Israel is that uh, the Assad regime will be neutered. And it, it, it's almost worth their while to have a failed state uh, like Iraq next door than have a, a challenger as powerful as Syria. And, uh, and then we have this uh, Obama. And uh, he, he can't even look people in the eye when he's had interviews recently. And um, he's uh, painted himself in the corner. He has to do something. He said he would do something. And people like John McCain are going to ride him like a bitch until he does do something. It'll never, it'll never be enough for John McCain until we have another Iraq or Afghanistan on our hands. And then we have Pete King out there ballyhooing about uh, he's so disappointed in the isolationist uh, wing of the Republican Party and you know, directing his his uh, vile his bile towards uh, Rand Paul and the like. And first of all, I want to correct Mr. Peter King. For a congressman, he's awfully inarticulate. Um, these people are not isolationists, they're interventions, uh, non-interventions. And there's a big difference, and you need to, to learn the difference be, before you shoot off your big fucking Nazi mouth, Peter King. And um, the uh, UN is uh, once again saying that, uh, they, from what they can tell, the, uh, the uh, rebels are the ones who have used these chemical weapons. And um, So... Anyway, the U.N. serves the U.S., so they'll do whatever the U.S. wants. I know a lot of people think the U.S. serves the U.N., but uh, it's actually the other way around. So we'll get what, uh, the United States will get what it wants out of this. And then, uh, and then the, uh, the last thing I want to say about this is that, uh, you know, I talk about the parade of uh, warmongers, but I'm also going to talk about the parade of hypocrites. And that's the fact we've got the same idiot parade of uh, hypocrites, the hypocritical parade, uh, between the Dem Republicans and the Republicans. So when uh, Bush was starting his illegal wars, uh, of course, uh, every, all the Republicans were on board, and a lot of Dem Democrats finally got on board as well. And um, so now, and, and, and then during the wars, the wars went on. Uh, the Republican base was very critical of the liberals for being against the wars, and were, even went so far as to say um, that it was the, the duty of all U.S. citizens to, to support their president, right or wrong, in wartime. And uh, so uh, now we have the tables turned, of course. Now we have the Democrats doing the war. Most of the Democrats are basically on board with it. And uh, there's a lot of Republicans that are, are all for it. And um, now we have the, uh, the uh, Republicans calling for justification of an illegal war. We need more evidence. And, and uh, so it just, it just goes back and forth. It's just hilarious to watch. And it's just disgusting that people have such short memories that they can't tell that uh, both the Dem Republicans and the Republicans do the same goddamn thing, and, and, and it's retarded. Just here we go again. Um, these people coming out here and acting like it's all new. Oh, gee, look at that. You know, we need to have justification for the war. We need to have some evidence, and uh, and you know, and then they complain about how the liberals got out and uh, protested against those last wars. But uh, where are they now? They're not out there protesting Libya. They're not out there protesting Syria. And um, and I want to say the, the, all these uh, rights are legit, legitimate. Um, the uh, Republicans had Dem the Republicans and the Democrats had a right to bitch about each other over uh, ten or eight years of Bush, and the Republicans and the Democrats have a right to bitch at each other now under Obama because um, they're right, but they just don't see their own hypocrisy. So uh, that's all I'm pointing out. 
And, uh, well, I guess that's all I have to say. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one, too. And remember, if I agreed with you, then we'd both be wrong.